This is the podcast for the BBC World Services World Have Your Say on the 4th of February 2016. Now coming up, you're going to hear a conversation between six new Syrian migrants and a couple of German residents in the Carnival City of Cologne. Uh, We're going to talk about one of the biggest street parties in Europe. Some say low turnout this year. Is that because of the bad weather or bad feelings after the attacks that took place a month ago? Also, what does it mean to be a new arrival in this city and this country at such a particular time? If you want to get a look at the terms and conditions, just go to bbc.com forward slash terms. noisy here. You're very welcome. It is World Have Your Say from the BBC World Service. But today it's Women's Day at the Carnival in Cologne. Me? Well, I'm sitting on a bed and I'm looking out at uh, the party goers, the carnival goers that are walking by on the sodden streets of this German city. Uh, You can hear a band probably there in the background. Round to the left of me actually is the cathedral where the attacks took place a month ago. So we do think it's pretty empty out there. We're going to hear from my guests of whether this year it's different. Have people stayed away? I know I've definitely heard that from some people, but they're trying to figure it out. Could be bad weather or, as I mentioned, a bad feeling following those attacks. Let me see. I have six new Syrian migrants that are sitting on this bed with me. We also have a couple of Germans. Uh, It's pretty cosy here, but we're going to get into the conversations about what does it mean for Germany this particular day? It's very important. Everybody has told me that find it very close to their heart when it comes to the traditions of this city. But also for the new Syrians that are here in the city, what do they make of what they see in front of their eyes? I have to say my eyes have been wide as saucers, so I'm very curious to hear from my guests how they find it. Now, let's start with the lady to the right of me, Miriam. Hi, Miriam. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Hello, I'm Miriam. I'm from Brazil and I live in Germany for 20 years. And I have a carnival show, Imisitzung, with immigrants and Germans. And we make a kind of different carnival in Cologne. So what I've looked at uh, so far today, there's a lot of drinking, there's a lot of cruising, I think the word might be. But are there less people here this year, do you think? Yeah, it's incredible, uh, empty. But um, just I, I'm, I'm an optimist and I think it's just the weather. I just want, don't want to believe that people are really staying at home because they are afraid of something. You know... There are photographs which we have put up um, on the BBC News site, bbcnews.com, because today we spoke to the hotel receptionist who showed us a picture of what we're looking at now, that plaza at 10 a.m. last year. Absolutely packed, like a rock concert, right? When I look out, I see some stragglers, a few stands, nothing at all. I mean, like the end of a party, you know, just the people that are walking around. And I can't believe that that is the same scene. Uh, the thing is, um, last year was not raining so much with like this year, and uh, the people go mostly in the in the bars to to have fun and carnival. Um, I don't know. I I I see it's there. There are more police police policemen on the streets than Yekin. And, this and Yekin, you have to describe. <laughs> you have to you have to translate. We're going to be translating from German, from Arabic. Yeah. Well, Jekin is uh, in English someone that's crazy about carnival. It's like um, with a red nose and and drunk and happy and everything at the same time. A bit of a clown. A bit of clown, yeah. (laughs) Well, it's really good to meet you. Um, Beside you is... Cora, some of our listeners might have heard you a little bit earlier on some of the radio shows because you've been in and out all day, although in a different outfit from when I first met you this morning. Describe Cora. Yeah, I'm wearing a red hat and um, uh, socks which are red and white in the colors of Cologne. And actually I had to change because uh, I was just at a party and I'm going back to a party after this <laughs> talk here. And yeah, so um, I'm here and I'm originally from Cologne, from the region here. And um, yeah, I've been celebrating Carnival for years. I grew up with it. And yeah, that's about me. Miriam, do you think Cora is a, a yakin? Absolutely. Word? This is a yak, yes. Is that, yes. Yak. <laughs> is that a good label? I think so. I would say a modest yak. <laughs> so talk us a little bit through it, because I think I'm scratching the surface when I speak to people about the carnival. There is a deep meaning for you as a resident of Cologne. 
Yeah, well, I, as I said before, I grew up with it and I uh, happened to live abroad for six years. So when I came back and I celebrated my first carnival again, I could feel how emotionally touched I was by it because it's something deep down rooted in yourself when you're growing up with it. And it's about, it's, in the end, it's a Christian tradition, it's a Catholic tradition, and I don't think that many people know about it. Because uh, all this craziness, for want of a better word, um, will end when people get down to business with Ash Wednesday and Lent, when uh, it's a more sobering experience until Easter. Yeah, exactly. It's a Catholic uh, tradition, and the idea is not to drink or to eat any meat. That's the original idea behind it for six weeks. So everybody living here says, okay, before we do that, we need to drink, we need to party, we need to enjoy ourselves. And that's the origin of carnival. So it's rooted in Catholic tradition. I don't think that many people know about it, but it's true. And I think even before that, they say there were some uh, pagan traditions as well associated with this time of year, but goes goes back thousands of years. Uh, apparently, this kind of uh, subverting, shall we say, the status quo. Now, you look at political satire quite closely, Miriam. Yes, uh, Carnival was um, in the beginning. Uh, we we went to the not we uh, for for many many years ago. Um, the people had um, a voice, so you went on the stage to tell about. Not everything is not okay and and in a funny way so it was a kind of liberation of of opinions and um, it, it's it's a bit lost I think uh, we try to, to keep it up and a lot of groups are trying to keep it up but um, this is a loss on the streets I think I know some are wondering what might happen on Monday uh, because they may be poking Satire, not fun because they're not minimizing it. The sexual attacks that took place on New Year's Eve, uh, Angela Merkel's uh, migrant and refugee policy. There might be some parades, some floats uh, that will take place on the carnival on Monday, people have told me. Uh, uh, that they're thinking that people will poke fun, that they will make fun of Angela Merkel perhaps on Monday when they have the parade that goes by with those various floats um, with refugees and migrants. I want to bring uh, some of the voices of the people that we met down in the plaza and uh, when we talked about why is it just so empty. Let's take a listen. It's raining. It's raining and we thought it, 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 it's, it, it's making a difference between last year and this year because of the things uh, which happened on uh, New Year's Eve. But we, we, I think most of it is the weather. They are, they are in the pubs, <laughs> I'm sure. We changed our uh, costume, we disguised other ways. So not too sexy and no skirts, no skirts but the rest... They told us so many times there would be lots of policemen and women and no. Just wondering, why is it so empty? I think it's because of the uh, attacks in uh, New Year. And probably the people are a bit afraid to come here. And that's why we also came later and thought about if we even want to come here. And we're actually a little surprised that it's so empty because we expected yeah, to be a bit more, but really, really empty. The weather isn't great today, so that's probably why a lot of people thought, no, no, let's go. So, I don't know, I'm just having a quick look. Cora, can you just look out there? What do you think? It's still not very many people, right? I think um, most of them have gone to bars and parties now. I, I admit it's a uh, few people there. Um, the weather is bad. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit like after the party, you know. It's like, uh, well, it started at 11.11 .11 this morning. So people need to have a lot of stamina still to be standing there right now. I understand uh, the time here. It is a quarter past five in the evening. Uh, just briefly, Miriam. Um, I talked about the sexual attacks, which many people felt uh, women there were failed by the German police. But this day, Women's Day, the carnival, it has a, a feminist message, I think. Yes, uh, here we are allowed to, to cut the tie of the man. Well, symbolic is a terrible thing, but we have lots of fun. You're allowed to kiss everybody and we, we're allowed to kiss every man.
and it's okay. Okay, well, let's, that, that kind of gives us a good little, what would I say, intro. As I move, I'm actually on a bed, <laughs> moving around on the mattress. So sometimes it takes me a second. Bear with me, uh, listeners that are listening to World Have You Say on the BBC World Service. Let's meet some of the other guests that have been listening and uh, getting the history and political lesson as I have on the carnival, the Viber Fastnock Women's Day. Viber Fastnock. There you go. Uh, 2016 Women's Day Carnival. Um, Let's meet some of our guests. I have a Syrian family. Let's meet them all. Let's start with mum. Hello. 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 (laughs) And your name is Jumna. Uh, Yeah. Jumna, where did you come from? Uh, I'm from uh, uh, Syria, uh, Salamiye. And beside you is Rima, who's going to help us if we need to do any translation from BBC Arabic. Hi, Rima. Yeah, absolutely. And Salamiya has a lot of meaning in Syria. It's it's a town full of diversity. Uh, it's it's full of minorities, uh, and ancient minorities like Ismaili that Ujmana's family belonged to. Um, so this is a very interesting town in Syria that the family comes from. I want to meet the rest of the family. Hello, would you like to tell your, our listeners your name? I'm uh, Wissam. And you are how old? Uh, I am uh, uh, 17 uh, year ago. Uh, I am from Syria. I uh, come from Syria uh, from uh, six months. Uh, and I know your family came at different times, which we're going to get into a little bit later in the program as well. But let me go around and meet your sister. Hi. Hi. My name is Salma. Uh, I came from Syria since a month ago. I'm 26 years old. I study statistics and um, hopefully wanted to call myself a statistician or a researcher here in this country. Okay, well we have to tell our listeners what you're wearing. You have gone for carnival. You quite like this idea, I'm thinking. Uh, yes, but um, it's not my idea actually, but my friend gave me this clothes and I was surprised and so happy for that. You're enjoying it? Yes, very much. Okay, so I have to tell our listeners, you have kind of green tinsel on your head. You have a glittery, sparkly uh, eye mask, also green. You also have an overall of green fur with Bugs Bunny on it. Let me see some other little teddy bears. So you definitely look like you're in the carnival spirit. Your sister is sitting beside you. Hi. Hi, I am Lena. Uh, I'm from Syria. I uh, came... uh, uh, to hear uh, uh, from uh, one year ago uh, by uh, family re- reunion. Uh, I am a poet, uh, and uh, now I'm trying to learning uh, German uh, and uh, German and English language. Well, the English is going well. Your husband's here. Hi, Osman. Yeah, hi, I'm Osman. I'm also from uh, Syria, Salamiye. I was the first uh, family member here in Germany. I started as a f- uh, physics master student. Then I've changed some plans to uh, get a r- different residence per- permit. Now doing intensive course in German language. So that is the family. Jumna, Wiza, Salma, Lina and Osman. But we also have Wala who is here. Hi. And you are dressed as in a onesie as people would call it. You know, the all-in-one outfit of a cow. So you're also getting in the carnival spirit. Tell our listeners about you. Uh, I'm Wala. I'm from Syria too and they are my friend. I came here from uh, like six months ago and uh, I was study law and I'm um, Syrian feminist now. <laughs> You're a Syrian feminist, so really curious to hear of what you make of what you've seen today on the streets. Uh, actually, thank you uh, about the information uh, for the carnival. Actually, I came and uh, have fun uh, and I don't know a lot about the carnival today. I know it's like uh, the Women's Day and uh, it's really nice, nice idea. <laughs> so one of the topics that was trending on Twitter was called cravate, yeah. and uh, which is the tie that women, young women like yourself, while I can go and cut off their ties. Did you do that? Actually, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> You know, there's still time. It's only um, 5.20. I I will do that, of course. (laughs) But what did you make of it? I mean, I had some guests this morning, and some of them were saying there is an ugly part to this carnival. Explain that, Miriam, and I want to get your response then, Walla. Well, uh, when people are 300 
40, uh, 40, 60 days in the, in the year, like, I'm not going to do nothing that's not under control. And then you have carbon, Those <laughs> all risen, drink and drink and drink. And then they are weird like a zebras and they are lying on the streets at nine o'clock in the morning. This is ugly. So that, and I know people told me to keep an eye out for a little bit later on. I mean, the first things to open in that plaza that I'm looking down on were the beer stalls and people were uh, really going for it at 8 a.m. And uh, in case you're wondering what you're listening to with the band in the background, you are listening to World Have You Say on the BBC World Service. I'm here on a bed with a number of guests from Germany and Syria and making sense of the fact that uh, this city is having its Women's Day Carnival and uh, uh, trying to make sense of it, particularly with a very serious topic of sexual attacks that took place a month ago. Well, uh, what about all the drinking, all the drunkenness, all the people that are behaving, some would say, inappropriately? Uh, actually, um, it's different uh, about our culture, maybe, but still new and nice. Uh, actually, I I'm happy to be here today, and I see that, like, and you think... Um, something like I will be curious and interesting about it. <laughs> what about you, Salma, when you see it? it? Do you feel, can you, I don't know, did you imagine anything like this when you were in Syria thinking about coming to Germany? Uh, in fact, we used to be drunk in some special events in my country. Also, what I want to say is uh, that German people is hardworking people. So I'm happy to see them uh, laughing and drinking and it's good, I think, for them. <laughs> <laughs> great, this is great. <laughs> That's Miriam there chiming in. But, you know, I'm going to lean over to Jumna for a second. But what about this, Jumna? You have young sons and daughters that are here. And Rima, if you want to uh, translate, that's fine. Um, do you worry about them being influenced in a way that you don't like by living in this society that is quite, particularly Cologne, very open, very permissive. That's what people keep telling me, very liberal. No, not at all. As long as uh, it's not harmful for them and it's not harmful for the others, then I don't have any, I don't object to, to that. I'm, I'm very happy with this atmosphere. I think it's really important that people express themselves. And, and as long as they don't harm anyone, that's, that's great. So, you know, I want to come to your son. I want to hear from Wisa. This is different to where you come from, to where you grew up. A little bit uh, different. Uh, I am uh, very, very happy because I am here uh, in Germany in this carnival. It's beautiful, very beautiful. Uh, but uh, I have uh, a problem. It's my dad is in Syria and uh, he far away. <laughs> and... Uh, he have uh, a problem in the, his health, uh, health yeah. uh, in Syria, he, he's uh, dangerous, uh, dangerous, he, yes. We can totally understand you, is your dad is still in Syria, you're worried about him, it's dangerous, and that you're worried about his health as well. Salma, do you want to tell me more? Um, maybe I'd like to tell you about here in Germany what's the most difficult thing for me here. Uh, actually, that um, when I was a teenager, I always dreamed about being useful and successful and effective person. And I worked for that and I got university degree and learned English. But now in Germany, it's new language and um, again in the point, uh, in the start point. So it's difficult to feel that you are again in the start point after all of what you have done. That's difficult, just. But maybe, I mean, this is the way that I perhaps see it, um, is that you've done it all once, you can do it all again. Yes, of course, of course. I'm hopeful, personally. Yes. <laughs> I wish so. So, Lena, you are a poet. I want to get into that for a moment. Are you going to continue to be a poet 
in Germany? Do you think you'll be able to write poetry in German? والان بدات صدرت اول جريده ناطقه باللغه العربيه في المانيا اللي هي ابواب وبدانا كلياتنا ننشر فيها كل الكتاب السوريين الموجودين هون عم عم يساهموا بالجريده Of course, I'm going to continue writing poetry. And also, um, we have a, a, a newspaper, Abwab, the first Arabic language newspaper. Um, so there is a lot of writers contributing to the newspaper. So, um, And I think Nashrti Shibi Abwab Mushik, Lina has also some of her poetry published in that newspaper. I want to come back and get some of your poetry throughout the hour, so start thinking about what it is you might like to uh, read and we'll get Rima to translate. Salma, can I come back to you for a second? Um, your dad, what's the situation there? Uh, my dad uh, have, uh, has a heart disease. Okay, um, I don't know, it's so hard for us that uh, he's uh, so far and I wish it will be uh, uh, quick uh, procedures, uh, okay, just to, we can bring uh, him here. And he's uh, at the moment in Salamia? Yes, he is in Salamia and he is also has uh, p- political problems just because uh, of his ideas, you, you know. Yes, he f- uh, failed from his job unfairly and have a heart disease and there's no money for him. It's It's so bad situation for him there. I can tell the minute you begin speaking about your father, your eyes change. So, I, you know, I can understand that it's, that it's upsetting to think about that. Are, is everybody else here? All the other brothers and sisters are here, yeah? Yes, all of us here. So it's just dad at home? Yes. Yeah, okay. And Salma, fired from his job, as Salma is telling me there. Um, I think maybe I should explain the bed a little bit more. Miriam, would you like to describe exactly where we are to our listeners? Well, I would call this the integration bed. <laughs> If the world would be a bed, this uh, this would maybe the solution for the the world. I think it's great. I I feel cozy, cozy, cozy. I don't know how to say this, but everybody is relaxed. We're talking to each other. I I will I wish for the world an integration bed. <laughs> okay, Osman, what do you reckon? Yeah, sorry. What do you think about uh, Miriam's yeah, no, idea? We, the the world is known as a small village, but now it's a small bed, like. <laughs> Well, with white uh, billows and it's really <laughs> it, it is rather small I should describe that we're up on them um, there's a hotel called the 12 Apostles downstairs it is raucous would be one word I might use to describe it did pop a little video up at BBC Nula people are drinking beers they're dancing um, it seems like it's I don't know 2 a.m. in a nightclub but it was just 3 p.m. in the afternoon in this German city off Cologne and um, my guests so we have this bed in the hotel room uh, I'm in the center of it with the microphone my guests are all around me some dressed as jesters others as cows other have tinsel on their head but whatever <laughs> we're going to continue the conversation <laughs> we're going to uh, continue the conversation in the next half hour I do hope you'll stay with me um, there is a saying that everybody here has here at Carna- Carnival what's it called? Allah! Yeah that's it that's the one Hi, you are very welcome back to Cologne. The sun is actually beginning to set. I mean, it's been a grey old day all day here at the Women's Day Carnival. We were wondering, did people stay away or... You know, was it due to the bad weather or was it due to the fact that uh, attacks took place? uh, Over 400 uh, sexual attacks just around the corner from where we are. So we're getting into all that on World Have You Say from the BBC World Service. I'm Nuala McGovern. I'm here with a number of guests from all around the world. very far apart, I suppose, Syria and Germany, but there has been such a discussion about migrants and refugees that we are trying to make sense of a lot of those issues. If you were with us the first half hour, you would have heard all about why this carnival is so significant. But, you know, let's find out what is it like for a refugee in this city and in this country. Uh, Cora and Miriam, Cora is from uh, Cologne. Miriam is from Brazil, but living in, in Germany for 20 years. So we're going to get a conversation going. We have Salma, Lina, Osman, Jumna, Wiza and Wala, all from Syria, that are going to be talking about, I want to know, you know, where do they live? Who are their friends? 
what are their aspirations? Miriam, what would you like to ask? I would like to ask you if, he, if when you go on the streets, if you if you see and, and if you feel that people are looking at you if a, a, in a kind of different way. Since the attacks, you mean, Miriam? Since they are here. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, I, I'm uh, Salma, firstly. <laughs> yes, I, I think uh, people are so friendly in the city which I am in and looking so friendly. But one, one time uh, in the train, I felt that someone looking to me uh, with strange looks. But I think it's about me because I, I was afraid because I am new in Germany. So it's my fears, not, my, uh, not uh, his look. Uh, they are so friendly and help us always and always say guten tag hello for us they are so good to us yeah voila um, actually i think um, uh, already i have uh, a lot of german uh, friends but i know them from the middle east so uh, here is uh, different uh, so i think uh, the people here is really f friendly especially in the Nordine. Actually, there is a, um, a community, a, a different culture, and I think sometimes maybe we can feel um, like strange or something like that. Is that because there is in in every um, country, every place, there is uh, good people and bad people. You know, so sometimes you you meet those, those or those. But I think uh, in, in the in the last, I I, I feel comfortable. In, in cold. I understand you had a lot of stress when coming here, like on your escape, and also here there's some strain, you know, you live in a very packed refugee shelter, and my question is, if you had one wish, what would you like to improve at first? Here in Germany? Yes. My wish? Yes. Um, actually, you know, it's hard, hard to... <laughs> <laughs> question. I think I want to complete my study and I want to uh, start something to help other refugees. Okay. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so you're saying access to education is very important to you? You don't have that access yet? Uh, actually, I, for now, I'm waiting for my paper because I came for like six months ago and I need to wait for my paper and now I can't do anything. So what are you doing all day? Actually, um, um, we are start a, a new news uh, news uh, paper, Arab newspaper. Lena told about that. Actually, we start to uh, to help other to to accept the law and uh, um, culture, German culture, uh, German law. We we want to to help uh, each other and don't be. Uh, ask the government to 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 do uh, uh, everything and actually I, I i do myself something like read and the walk uh, something like that but actually i'm um, i i can't do something s serious now for now <laughs> before the paper you know and do you have enough space to do all that if you live in a refugee place? Uh, yeah, what does it look like? I think I'm curious, maybe our listeners are too. Uh, that, that would be my question, to, to describe where you live and how you live. Yeah. Actually, I, uh, I was lucky because I, I'm living in uh, like uh, a sharing apartment. apartment. Yeah, but the, another people uh, live like in a camp, you know, something, some place to to refugee. Uh, I was lucky to live with other refugee in uh, a, a sharing apartment. Actually, it it it's really, really good. But the the problem, I think, that there is no privacy, you know. So uh, there uh, every two refugee in in same place in same room. So there is no room for for you. You can't feel like um, our uh, your home or your space, something like that. But actually, I think it's really good for 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 this. Uh, for this period of time, this period of time. Yeah, this period for time is it's it's good. I think. How does the family live? I would like to know how how do you live. I'm Osman. Uh, as, I, as I told you, I was the first member here. I started with a family reunion with Lena, which is the oldest uh, daughter for my mother-in-law, Jumna. Uh, we're living in an apartment of three rooms in Herne. Uh, now, uh, Wissam is living with us, the young uh, uh, man. 
he's 17 going to school is like we are trying to deal with a teenager it's a little <laughs> bit interesting and we enjoy it uh, and now my mother-in-law my uh, uh, sister-in-law living in uh, a camp or I think uh, to be more specific uh, it's a sport hall in Bergisch Gladbach near Tukun ok well let's hear a little bit more about that Osman is that Salma and Jumna that are living there yeah, okay, let's hear a little from Salma and then also from Jumna about describe exactly where you're going to go home to bed. Yes, yeah, Salma. Uh, we live in a camp in a big room with uh, 12 other people, so men and families and women, and it's mixed. So there is no privacy at all. And sometimes we feel a, a bit afraid. Maybe some, they drink, or, you know, maybe some problem will happen. So we, we wish to get a, a quick procedures for that. So do they, have they given you any idea of how long you'll be there? Yes, they said we'll be for maybe six weeks. And now we spent four weeks and we are waiting for the next two weeks. Yeah. Let's hear from Jumna as well. How is it living like that in that shelter with 12 other people in the room? How is it living like that in that shelter with 12 other people in the room? والله عم نحاول نتأقلم صعب كتير صعب يعني يعني عهوا ما كنا عايشين ببلدنا يعني بيت لحالنا كذا هلق مع ناس مختلفة من أجناس مختلفة من بلدان مختلفة أفارقة ولا مغاربة ولا uh, it's very very difficult we are trying to assimil- we are trying to get you know to, to, to just deal with the situation but it's very difficult because back home we had our own home now we are living with 12 other people from different countries from different nationalities um, speaking different languages so it is very very difficult <laughs> And it's also difficult because it's mixed. It's women and men. It's not that it's only women. So it's, it's very difficult. So that process, perhaps six weeks. Miriam, would you like to ask another question? Um, I just want to ask if this uh, makes him more together as, as family or if it, it makes more, more fights. I don't know. Because it's so near to each other that maybe it could be complicated or not. Actually, <laughs> we fight together, <laughs> but it, it, uh, in general, it uh, makes us uh, more uh, related together. Yes, because uh, we can't be, um, anyone of us can't be alone. Yes, so we, we're always together, together, work together, we, you know. <laughs> well, uh, you have a question. Yeah, actually, I, I will change the, the subject some, some way. I want to ask uh, Cora, right? The name, right? Yes. <laughs> Cora, yeah. I want to ask Cora, like a German woman, what uh, she think about what happened in uh, New New Year Eve in Cologne. Because uh, uh, I am like a Syrian feminist. I talk a lot about that and writing about that. Uh, the Syrian community is it was busy about this subject. And I, um, uh, the Begida, for example, uh, uh, trying to to use this this um, what happened, and the uh, media, the police, uh, there is. Uh, uh, I am confused. What do you think, like a German woman? Oh well, that's a very complex question, and it's difficult to speak on behalf of all uh, German women. So I think the best thing is to give you my personal opinion. Yeah, I think it's very sad currently that it's misused by big political parties to make politics on a pretext of Muslim people, because um, obviously it was a gang of criminals from North Africa that's even not confirmed but um, it's very wrong now to play it into the fields of refugees and to say that refugees are criminals and so on and in terms of uh, feminist ideas I think also it's very wrong to say that German men you know they're saints and uh, migrant men that they are bad you know it's not like that black and white it's much more diverse and I, I mean it's either way there's German rapists, rapists you know German men raping women and there is probably refugees who happen to rape a woman you know so it ha- it's more we should more talk about men in general <laughs> and um, to discuss what to do in order to prevent men becoming aggressive 
Um, I, have I just want to introduce you again, Rima, to our guests. If they're just tuning in to World Have You Say on the BBC World Service, Rima is from BBC Arabic and has been with us throughout the day. Sorry, Rima. Um, I wanted actually to ask uh, Wala because um, you have written a really interesting article in a Bob newspaper about divorces. Uh, more and more Syrians are speaking about how, you know, the the arrival often times, and not only the arrival is breaking down families among many Syrians. Um, uh, women are getting divorced, um, and it's the talk among Syrians. And you wrote about it. I was just curious to to ask you why do you think so many. Well, women are asking for a divorce. Uh, actually, uh, like um, uh, ex-law <laughs> students, I think it's uh, all all the problems about the law in our country and uh, uh, about the power of law, not about the culture. Uh, if uh, uh, the, what happened in the, the new uh, New Year Eve and the divorce and all of of uh, refugees um, problems it's it's not about uh, different culture it's because we are don't have uh, a power for law in our country so the women want to divorce in our country uh, they will pay um, like a, a huge uh, you know something like a, a, um, a huge price for, for yeah, asking a for a divorce price, yeah. uh, Exactly, a huge prize for for this decision, because it's really not easy. The society and the, the people uh, not accept that. So the women's when uh, come to Germany, for example, or any any uh, country of Europe, uh, there is a human rights, there is a power of law. So it, uh, they they thinking about uh, we can we can do what we we want to do. Actually, uh, like uh, me, like well. I um, actually I'm happy to be in German now. Uh, when we when we make a revolution in Syria, we want to be like German, like Europe, like any any place have a human a human rights, uh, a law, um, a good culture, you know. Miriam, I have a question to Osman. If Germany is Germany, that was what you expected. Um, does something shock to you? Yeah, about uh, talking about shock. shock. Yeah, of course. Shock, like, yeah. yeah, of course. Like for anyone uh, will move from Middle East or to this kind of culture, to the Western culture, especially here in Europe, in Germany, it it will happen. This kind, like socially, uh, in the like on uh, many layers. Uh, What was the first thing? I, I like you know you you you. I don't know how you came. You can tell me whether you came by plane or boat or however it was. As I told you, I started as a student here. Then I changed uh, my whole plan. But uh, talk about yeah, the shock. It was uh, maybe the order here. Maybe yeah, <laughs> law, the power of law, the power of um, uh, such thing. It, like everything in its uh, place, uh, feeling safe. It was weird in the first period for me. And I, if I. Make I, I want to have a comment of Cora's uh, first question about uh, what we wish as Syrian people, and it's a very very uh, big question for us in general uh, because like we we did uh, this a huge step to move to leave everything to leave our houses our families and. Uh, and I think most of us uh, weren't um, uh, like a personal choice. Most of us were forced to do this, to go to somewhere else. They don't know anything to do. What, what, where are they going, or what they should do? From where to start? So, what we wish? It's a really weird question because we started to wish huge things in our country, our uh, Syria. Like we. We were thinking about freedom and changing something really serious in our political regime or something like that. And now, for example, me, I'm trying to learn a new language and I'm watching my country on news. It's what I wish. It's it's a big question. Like feeling make me feel weird. <laughs> Just want to talk to you about the order. When I came to Germany, I thought, I believed that in Germany there is no corruption and it's everything in order. Baby, it's going to change. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's not like this. Like the, the first look, like, of course, there are a little more details and the shade. You know. uh, compared <laughs> to Brazil and Syria, I'm sure there's uh, more order it's, it's here. A, it's a heaven, like it's a heaven compared yeah. to, to Syria. Or a hell, I don't know exactly. I don't know. 
I just have to let you, I have to let you know you're listening to World Have You Say from the BBC World Service. I'm Nuala McGovern. And as you were listening to Osman and Miriam there, I do also have to set the scene that we're all sitting on two single beds that are pushed together in a small hotel room overlooking the plaza uh, where the band is playing, as you can hear behind us. But as Osman and Miriam are talking, they're leaning against a wooden headboard and having a very relaxed chat. So I just kind of wanted to bring you that picture as you listen to this program. We we're trying to find out about what what life is like in this part of world, have your say, for the new Syrian migrants that have arrived. I'm curious, following the attacks, because it's all part of the same context of the discussion we're having, I've heard there is now somewhat tension between the North African community in Cologne and the Syrian community. Has anybody got any comments on that, whether it's something you've seen or heard about? Well, you seem to think not. Actually, I don't know about what the North African, um, you know, there is many country. Uh, actually, I, I think the problem start when when the police say something like it's really public, like uh, South Africa, Arab people, who Arab people, who South Africa, you know, there is uh, many country, many culture, there are many laws, many many things you, you can't uh, say. I, I can't say Europe people. What your people? There is a, a different, different. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I would like to describe myself. I'm Brazilian. I have uh, um, brown hair. I'm a bit uh, overweight. I'm, I'm very hell. Um, um, where for, where am I from? If I did something wrong and everybody saw it, how they would describe me? Well, she looks like an Italian girl. No, she looks like a Syrian gay girl. I hate this way of uh, describing on the media. Oh, he looks he looked like a South uh, things. I, I don't like this. Salma. I want to, to talk about North African people. I meet them, they are with me in the camp. I want to say uh, uh, they have uh, a really bad behaviors, but that because in their countries they have uh, no law, no education, nothing. So I think they are the victim. I feel sad about them. They have no expectations for future. They don't uh, know what to do in life. They have no expectations. Yeah. But you don't feel sad for the people who carried out those attacks. They say... Um, they say that the people who attacked women on New Year's Eve, the police tell me they were mainly North African men. Oh, about that, um, I'm not sure about that. It's it's so bad thing, and I expect. Um, um, okay, it's um, a, a big problem. I I think they need a treatment, you know. Yeah. But uh, yes, I. I don't know, but uh, if they are in uh, a country like this, uh, which have an um, extreme low, it will be good for them. Yes. So you think that eventually it could all work out? Because what some people are saying, you've heard this probably, sorry, Miriam, if you're, my back to you, um, that culture, German culture, particularly Cologne, very open, liberal, permissive society, that it is incompatible so it cannot be um, that people from North Africa, some people from North Africa would not be able to live here, that they are too conservative what? Oh, you can't I mean it's like uh, regardless of where you come from it depends on how you behave like and if you behave against law and if you commit uh, criminal crimes then you you'll be punished and i don't think it depends on your religion because you're from north africa or because you're from syria it depends on how you behave and that must be according to german law and well let's take that because say with the attacks with the perpetrators who carried those out do you think they should be allowed to stay in the country and be jailed or deported I think they should be um, jailed here. There should must be a fair um, procedure of criminal law as it's foreseen for people who live here and who commit a crime here. Yes. Uh, actually, I um, agree with uh, with Cora. Uh, everybody uh, don't uh, respect the law and ca German culture. Uh, they they need to to punish or or they need to to accept that. You know, actually, I, I'm really sorry about what what happened in Cologne. I, I love Cologne. 
And, uh, you know, when, when that happened, I am really shocked about that. And I think it's not about refugees or chairman or any human. It's about uh, uh, when women or anybody hurt in any place, there is the law uh, need to take the the procedure or, or, or and uh, and make make the possible thing you know yes rima um, I want to add that um, after what happened in Kelowna, I, I was seeing really a discussion among Syrians about sexual harassment and I think you know many people have been writing about it um, that um, you know in, in Syria um, in the streets we would sometimes have cases of but it would be individual it would never be on such a scale you know uh, and, and, you know, I think every woman here, yeah. I mean, Wala, you probably have thousands of stories of walking in Damascus streets and hearing ca calls or, or even yeah. being touched in, in inappropriate places. So, um, um, so you know, I was really happy to see the discussion among Syrians saying, uh, well, but let's talk about what's happening home oftentimes, you know. Yeah. But I I've never seen that in Syria on such a scale. You know, Egypt, yes, like on Tahrir Square, things yeah. like that would happen, but Syria never. And I think that's what shocked people, that they were concerned it was like a Tahrir Square outside the Cologne Cathedral where people were meeting for New Year's Eve. Um, really interesting to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, I'm just curious about other kind of day-to-day -day things. Um, the food that you're eating, the places you go. <laughs> okay, uh, um, um, <laughs> it's uh, so different for us. I, I saw this um, uh, shape of houses just in cartoon movies. So I'm um, I'm happy to see yeah. those houses, the, 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 the coloured the houses. houses. Yeah. yeah, I I know what you're talking about. They look like little, um, yeah, like in a cartoon. They're red and yellow yeah. and blue, and they're all around the square here in Cologne. Which I just want to, Miriam. Yeah. The music has stopped. They're cleaning the streets. It's oh over. Oh my god! Oh my god! I think they are all in the bars. Don't worry. <laughs> if you go downstairs, it's not a place for a mosquito anymore. Okay, Cora, Miriam, stand up there and describe what we're looking out at. Uh, you can put on your red hat if you want, Cora. <laughs> Tell our listeners around the world what it's like. Wet streets. It's um, dark. A very b big, um, what's the name, a screen. And uh, very drunk people <laughs> going not more any, uh, straight ahead anymore. And, um, and Many cleaners who are cleaning up the streets now. And by tomorrow uh, it should be clean. So you won't uh, recognize anymore that Weiber Fastnacht happened. Well, but already uh, we have a few days lined up now. So again, very soon people will be here celebrating. Well, we are ge in Germany it has to be clean tomorrow. And a uh, bit uh, lost persons on the street till they find the next beer. <laughs> so too negative. <laughs> L Lena, um, do you have a few lines of poetry that you'd like to share with us? Is that okay to ask yeah. you? Yeah? Why don't we do that in our last minute or so off World Have Your Say? And Rima, could you perhaps translate for me as uh, Lena does it, her poetry in Arabic? <laughs> Uh, sorry, we've written it on a piece of paper. That's okay, we can take our time. We have a couple of moments, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, an Majzara be parallel palms, the Assad regime bombed. Yeah, in Fern. It it's what. It's a it's a poem that was written uh, in the aftermath of um, of barrel of the Syrian regime bombing uh, a bakery. So right, Lena nice. um, with barrel bombs, Lena wrote this. Okay, so just give us one minute there, Lena. شظايا تحمل الأشلاء صوبك يا إله الرق والجوع نرفع صوتنا نحن الرعاع الميتون خلف جدران القصور. Whoa, that is difficult. Um, I, I think yeah. it's difficult. The, the, sh <laughs> the shrapnels um, are carrying the corpses um, um, close to you, um, God of, of mercy. Um, we are raising our voices. Um, we, um, your um, 
your dad um raw it's difficult it's beautiful like i think maybe it it could be like bedouin like from, from no followers um yeah behind the palaces thank you very much rima thank you very much lena and to all of our guests i do hope you enjoy the rest of carnival thanks for spending some of it with us on world every say on the bbc world service so one last time Hello!